Today is a very exciting day because this is episode 15, finally, of the Max Boom versus the High Bay LED light. And for those of you who are just joining and haven't been watching the other episodes, we are starting episode 15 where we left off in the previous mishaps. And I'm going to talk about that in this video, but for right now, take a look at the plants. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the Max Bloom so you can see this a little bit better. I turned this light on just for the sake of the video. And the color differences between the plants is not what they actually are. That's just because of this color temperature of this light versus this light. Um, if I was to move this, you would see they're both basically the same color. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to talk about a few things. Uh, obviously, the reason why we're start picking up episode 15 is because, as I said in the past, uh, I wasn't going to do any more episodes until they started to flower, and that's exactly what they are starting to do. So I'll get a little closer here just so you can see if I can move it. See that? Those are flowers that are going to be starting to open. So that means it is time to start these episodes again. And it's going to be uh, one episode per week probably on Sundays, just, just so you know. So I'm going to talk about a few uh, differences and similarities between these plants that I've noticed. And the same thing that has been happening since I've been doing all these tests is there is definitely tighter node spacing under the uh, Max Bloom, the pink purple light. Uh, the stem is a little bit thicker under the white light, and I've seen this under uh, multiple different grow tests with not just this light, but other white lights compared to a uh, pink purple light. It always seems like the stems are a little bit thicker under white light than they are under red blue lights. Uh, also, they tend to be a little bit more firm under the white light, and I see that here with both of these plants. Um, the node spacing, however, I want to talk about these plants kind of look, uh, they look very similar in size, in height. Uh, the one on the under the white light, the high bay light, actually looks a little bit larger, and that's only because of the node spacing being further apart. Uh, however, both of these plants are actually the exact same in the exact same progress of growth. I can even show you right over here, just like the one of the under the white light, same thing. There's those little grouping of flowers, and if you were to count these nodes, I don't want to make this video too long by doing all this, but if you were to count these nodes and look up to the top part, from the bottom up to the top, it's the exact same amount. They are basically identical plants, and uh, the only difference is just the node spacing. Uh, even on the even on these leaves, on the stem and everything, it's uh, you can totally see how much different it is in that proximity to these nodes. So that's the exact same thing that's been happening before. So now what I'm going to do is throw up some uh, time lapse of the past two trials on this before I got to this point. Uh, for those who have not been following along, I'm going to go ahead and talk about why you can watch these time lapses, uh, what I've done to get to this point as far as doing this as a control. So both of these lights have dimmers on them and they have been adjusted so that the wattage on both of these lights are exactly the same. Uh, offhand, I can't tell you, I can't really tell you what they are, but uh, one light is a passive heat sink and the Max Bloom has fans and the fans use 8 watts. I subtract the 8 watts from that uh, even to make sure that the lights are pulling the same wattage. And then I've been adjusting the uh, high bay to match that of the Max Bloom using my Apogee MQ500 power meter to make sure that the, the light intensity at the plant canopy was identical on both. And right now the high bay is sitting a little bit closer and that's just because of the way it disperses the light. It originally was a little bit higher and I had to move it down just a little bit to uh, make sure that the power at this plant top is the same as this plant top, just to make sure it's fair. Uh, now this is obviously, not an, an, I've said before, not an apples to apples comparison, simply because they're two completely different lights. One has lens, one's does, one doesn't. Um, so this is really just a light to light comparison, not really like, not comparing light spectrum to light spectrum because obviously that's not going to be the same. And I've done other tests like that before. If you watch my channel, there's other uh, tests where it's more of an apples to apples comparison with different lights. Uh, so I've also made sure, obviously, they're growing in the same container. There is uh, an aerator there, and there is um, air stones directly underneath the roots of each one of these bins, uh, net pots, I mean. 
So the nutrients are the same, the aeration is the same, and the temperature is the same. Uh, the only difference is one is uh, one plant's receiving white light, and the other one's receiving a, a tuned spectrum of red, blue, green, and infrared, and UV, and all that other kind of stuff. So at this point, what we're going to be doing is uh, increasing the light intensity to max. On the maximum, we're going to be turning on the flowering uh, LEDs right in the center there, and then we're going to be matching the wattage of that pulls with this light. Um, so even if this light's not at full blast, it's just going to match the wattage of that light. So this whole test has been about uh, following the directions for the max bloom, which means that uh, if it recommends putting the height at 24 inches uh, for the entire vegetative cycle of the plant, then that's where it's going to stay, and then the plant's going to grow up to it, and it's going to increase its intensity as it gets taller, as it would need to, because it gets, as it gets to the flowering, it needs more light intensity. But I have not been doing anything different with this. It's been using the recommended settings. And then also on the high bay, I have been adjusting it to match the max bloom. So wattage and intensity based on proximity. So that's about it for this episode. I didn't want to make it too, too long, but I kind of want to go over the details. You can expect the next episode to be out in about a week from now. Hopefully the flowers will be open and we'll start pollinating. And uh, so far, I'm very happy with this test. It's, uh, it's finally coming out to be uh, a little bit more reliable than the past test. And I'm gonna make sure that this reservoir is not gonna dry out. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention before I go, one last thing is, uh, well, actually two things. Uh, the first thing is I have been breaking off the, the suckers. I've been breaking off the suckers at the nodes. I don't want any suckers. I've been doing it on both. Um, I'm gonna kind of keep the plants kind of uh, contained and trained. So the other thing I want to mention too is I'm going to be doing another grow test series with a new light I've gotten and if you do like that light, I'm not going to mention it at this point, but if you do like that light and you are interested in buying it, there will be links in those videos uh, and then you can save some money on it as well. It's, I'm pretty excited to start that test as well. Um, that's about it. Appreciate you all watching. We'll see you in episode 16 and we'll see you later.